Hey cruisers, welcome back to another update on our Sun Princess cruise. It's day five today. It's a day at sea. And I just thought I'd give you a little update. First of all, I want to make a correction that somebody pointed out on our last video. Uh, I mentioned I was comparing um, the catch by Rudy and where it is in relationship to the buffet and I was comparing it to what I called cannelloni on Holland America and it's cannelletto I misspoke uh, thank you for pointing that out whoever did I appreciate it uh, but uh, basically let me give you an update on what's happened since our very first uh, video since the first couple of days uh, yesterday we were in Vigo, and let me go back another day before that, because the day before that was a day at sea, and we had dinner at another specialty restaurant called Makoto. I think it's called Makoto or Kai Sushi by Makoto. Now, this is another one of the specialty restaurants on board that comes at $45 per person cover charge. Now we have the premier package, which now uh, gives you unlimited specialty dining. So we didn't have to pay an additional $45 per person because we had already we already had the premier package. So we go to Makoto or Kai Sushi, whichever it is. I think Makoto is the name of the restaurant. Ocean by Makoto. I don't know. I get confused with these names. First of all, the restaurant, it's very comfortable. It's not very large. And it's situated right off of the piazza. So it's not a place for a quiet, romantic dinner. It can get very noisy because they do a lot of events in the piazza. A lot of entertainment, a lot of shows, a lot of music, uh, game shows, all kinds of things. So there's usually noise. is a pretty noisy area because it spans three decks. But nevertheless, it, it's still a nice place. You can look out and see the ocean. There's, It's all glass walled. It's kind of on the bottom edge of that sphere on the side of the ship. So we get a menu, and the lady who seats us explains the rules. And the rules are that on the left side of the menu is what I, what I would call a tasting menu. It's like an eight-course price fix menu, fixed price menu. And it's an eight-course menu with a lot of different sushi style, sashimi style items on it. And that is what's included if you've prepaid this $45 per person cover charge. There's a right-hand side of the menu that's a la carte, has all kinds of uh, sushi rolls, various appetizers, various items. Unfortunately, and that is not included with the $45 per person cover charge. That wasn't very clear to us, I think, when we booked the reservation. It, and, it, and we find it a little strange how it works. So basically, because what Ricky and I would have normally done in a sushi restaurant, we would go in and we would each maybe order a sushi roll. Like I would get a spicy tuna roll, she might get a shrimp tempura roll, and maybe we'd split a California roll, and maybe we'd have an order of edamame, and that'd be it. That'd be our meal. Well, if we wanted to do that last night, or night before last, whenever it was, night before last, we would have not only been paying the $45 per person cover charge, but we would have had to pay extra for those sushi rolls. And their sushi rolls are like 17, they're insanely priced, they're like $17 for a spicy tuna roll. Now, so we were basically felt kind of forced to eat this tasting menu, which neither of us really wanted. These are not things we would normally order. And so we went ahead and did it. We went ahead and ate it just to try it. 
Um, and it was good. I'm not saying the food wasn't good. The food is very good food. It's a little more ambitious and a little more adventuresome than Ricky and I would have been in a sushi restaurant. We pretty much eat sushi rolls. So, um, for us, we wouldn't go back. We wouldn't pay $45 per person to eat there. Now, we did notice sitting next to us was a lady having dinner, and all she was eating was a sushi roll. So, my question is, did she have to pay the $45 cover charge and the a la carte price, or was she able just to walk in and order a sushi roll and not have to have a reservation? Because if that were the case, that's what we would have done. We wouldn't have paid the $45 per person. So I don't think it was quite communicated very well that if you book Kai Sushi, this $45 per person, you're limited to this eight-course tasting menu. If you've dined at this restaurant on Sun Princess, did you understand that before you booked your reservation? Because maybe we're just stupid. I don't know. Uh, I think a better system, I would like to see Princess rethink this. I think a better system would be if you pay the $45 cover charge, number one, you're guaranteed a table. You don't just have to walk up and maybe get in. You're guaranteed a, a reservation, a table, but that $45 can apply to anything on the a la carte menu. So if you don't want the tasting menu and you just want to order some sushi rolls, some edamame, maybe some chicken skewers or whatever else they offer, that just comes off that $45. If you go over that, yeah, you have to pay extra. If you don't go over that, your $45 covers it. $90? for sushi, for Ricky and I, is unheard of. When we go to Bonsai Sushi on Carnival, we can each eat more sushi than we could ever stand to eat, plus appetizers, plus ramen, and the total bill might be $40, $45, maybe. And that's with two beers, you know, so to us, $90 for sushi is a little high. So I wasn't, I wouldn't, I wasn't a big fan of it for that reason. I think it, I, I just don't think the, uh, the policy, the pricing structure, and the way they did the menus, I, I, I think needs to be looked at differently. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. I just wasn't crazy about it. Okay, let me get on to yesterday. We were in Vigo, Spain. We've never been to Vigo before. We had booked a walking tour of Vigo. Our tour was supposed to begin, I believe, about 9.30 in the morning, and we were supposed to be back on board the ship by 11.30. Okay, so we meet at 9 o'clock at uh, wherever we met the meeting place for the tour. We were all given a green sticker, number three, put on our clothes. There were two groups, a brown group and a green group. Green three and brown three. Before long, we file out, and we were told that our guide, our tour guide, would meet us outside the cruise terminal here in Vigo. Okay, we go outside. We get outside the cruise terminal, and somebody from Princess is standing in front of the door and he sees our green tag and he says green this way. So we go that way. And there's, you know, other people in the green group. So we just start following these other people. Next thing I know, here is this little tour bus uh, that I'm following this group of people right to this tour bus. And there's a guide outside greeting us. We get on the tour bus. I did think it was a little strange, even at the time. I thought it was strange they didn't take our tour tickets. Usually they take your tickets because that's how they get paid. But I thought, oh, what the heck. We get on the tour bus. There were they, We had already been told back when we met in the morning that there were only 20 people on our tour. And this was a very small bus. 
there couldn't have been more than 18 or 20 people on that bus. It was very small. So that also kind of played into this thought, okay, this is about the right number of people. Not being familiar with Vigo, we just assumed maybe they have to transfer you to the old town and then you get off this coach and you do your walking tour. Okay, so we get on the bus, the bus leaves, the tour guide's talking, nice guy, him and his son are conducting the tour. We go on a tour, of the, a little tour of the city. We go on a little tour of a park. And then we start heading up a, a mountain to like a fort at the top of this mountain overlooking the city. And he starts talking about lunch. He starts saying, you know, when we go to lunch, we're going to have this paella lunch or something. And Ricky and I are looking at each other like, they're going to give us lunch? We only paid like $35 for this tour. We thought, man, this is a, this is a heck of a bargain for $35. Well, we get to the top of the mountain. He said, you know, we'll, we'll spend about an hour here or 30 minutes here. I don't remember. And uh, because we're going to be going back down, doing this, 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 and we'll be having lunch at one o'clock. Well, I looked at Ricky and I said, we're on the wrong tour because we're supposed to be back on board the ship by 1130. And plus, we kept wondering, when does the walking tour start? <laughs> we hadn't done any walking yet. Come to find out. We had gotten on the wrong tour bus. And 147, this is our 147th cruise. We've done hundreds of excursions. Well, this is something that's never happened to us in 20 some years of cruising. I think we ended up on the wrong tour bus. We uh, signed up for a walking tour and somehow we've ended up on a, a coach tour <laughs> of Vigo and they with never, lunch. With, with lunch, they never took our tickets and uh, we just, us. nobody really was there to direct us on which bus to get on or if there was a bus. So we were just kind of following some other people we thought were in our group. I guess not. Anyway. So, we told the guide, we said, uh, we think we're on the wrong tour. It turns out this is a private tour bus. This is something that a group of people on board the ship had booked. It's not even a princess tour. That's why he didn't ask for the tickets. If it had been a princess tour bus, they'd have asked for the tickets. They just said, oh, you're on the wrong bus. You need to go over here. But they didn't. It, they didn't even have tickets. <laughs> just a, a group of 20 people that got together and booked a tour. So... We told him we somehow ended up on your bus, and he was very gracious. He was very nice. He said, oh, um, well, we'll be glad to let you ride with us back down to when we get back into town, and then you can get off. But that could have been another hour or two away. We didn't know how long it was going to take. There were some other Princess tour buses at that fort. Not our bus, because we didn't have a bus. We were on a walking tour. We didn't know that. The walking tour, just they just walk across the street from the ship. You don't even get on a bus. We didn't know. We've never been here before. So I go up to one of the other tour guides. These are local guides. These are not people who work for Princess. Unlike some cruise lines, Princess does not have a Princess employee on each of these tour buses. So... I go up to this tour guide and I explained to her the situation and she was very nice and she got out her phone and she said I can call you a taxi. It'd be about she said it'd be about 10 euro to get back to town from this mountain fort wherever we were. And uh, she did. She called a taxi, and a few minutes later, a taxi showed up. The guy didn't speak a word of English, but we were able to communicate that we needed to get back down to the cruise ship, the cruise terminal. He knew where we needed to go. And sure enough, it was 10 euro, so it wasn't expensive. Of course, we missed our tour, but, you know, that was our fault. I mean, we just got on the wrong... Obviously, we're the only ones. <laughs> we just happened to walk behind the wrong group of people that got on this bus. Very, very weird, but it makes a great story, I guess. Uh, once we got back and got off the taxi, 
we could see that you could just walk right into town. From there, you could see that this there's a street. You cross the street, you go up some stairs, and you're in Vigo, basically. And so we just went on our own. We walked around a little bit, did a little shopping, saw the town. It was a beautiful day. And, uh, you know, within maybe an hour, hour and a half, we got back on board the ship. And we thought, you know, we really should tell somebody on the ship, Princess, uh, in their destination department about this because they could have done a better job of having people out there to guide people. We shouldn't have been able to get on the wrong bus. No, it was our fault. We screwed up. We just never saw the local walking tour guide with a sign. We All we saw was a group of people heading toward this bus. So. And what makes it even more interesting is I've got all of this on video. I was videotaping the entire thing so you can see the guy directing us there. You can see how we walked right by. There was no tour guide with a sign for a walking tour and how we ended up on this bus. But we were the only ones who did. Apparently, everybody else made it to the walking tour. So, our bad, I guess. So, nevertheless, interesting story. We get back on board. We go to guest services. Um, the shore excursion desk is not open until later in the day. But somebody at guest services took down notes about what had happened. And we didn't want a refund. We didn't expect that. We just wanted to let them know that they, in the future they might want to have somebody else out there to make sure people get on the right tour because we had no way to know where to go. And, you know, I mean, we traveled quite a bit. And maybe, that, maybe that's the problem. Maybe we took it for granted. If we had been less experienced travelers, we might have been a little more cautious of where we were going and what we were doing, but maybe we just take for granted that we know what the hell we're doing, but well, we didn't. So, turns out, even though we didn't ask for it, we told, and we told guest services, you know, we're not upset with Pr Princess. It was our fault. We just want to let you know that this happened, and you know, be aware that maybe having somebody else, you know, out there with a sign or directing people could be uh, prevent it from happening again in the future. We get a call in the in the uh, stateroom last night after we got back from dinner that the shore excursion department got the message from guest services and they had refunded us for our tour tickets, which I did not expect. Very nice that they did that, but it wasn't necessary. But I think it shows, you know, the type of company Princess is. Because it was totally our fault. It wasn't their fault that we missed the tour. Okay, last night we had dinner at the chef's table. Now we, as soon as we got on board the ship, we called to get on the waiting list to get to the chef's table. Because we've done two other chef's tables with Princess. We've done chef's tables with several cruise lines, and the chef's table is kind of the ultimate dining experience on board just about any ship that has it that is usually the ultimate dining experience. And so we got on the waiting list, and we were notified a couple of days ago that there was a chef's table. We were booked for the 26th, which was last night and that it was $149 per person, which is about 50% more than the last time we ate at the chef's table two years ago on Discovery Princess. So it has gone up considerably. But we thought, what the heck, we'll go ahead and do it. <clears throat> we met at five o'clock at this Mikado restaurant again, and the uh, director of restaurant services came out to greet us. We had a glass of champagne. I believe there were 10 people in our group. Yeah, I believe there was only 10 people in our group. It's limited to 10 or 12 people, and which is nice. And they took us back to the galley area where we put on some jacket. They give you these white jackets to put on. And we did, we were led into the galley where we got a chance to meet the executive chef and he took us on a little short galley tour, not extensive galley tour, but a short galley tour. 
Galley tours aren't as extensive as they used to be, I, and I think this is ever since COVID. They may have started limiting some of what they do. So we did the galley tour, got on, the, got out of the galley, took our jackets off, put our normal jackets back on, and then they led us through the dining room, the main dining room, to the very back of the ship, the very aft portion of the ship, where they have a little sectioned off. It's a table uh, surrounded with a curtain to kind of segregate it from the rest of the dining room. You can still hear what's going on out in the dining room, but it's it separates you, and it's very elegantly decorated. Very nice. And then they start bringing out course by course. The executive chef comes out, he explains the different pros, uh, meals, the, how this is going to work. And it was... There's also a wine pairing. I think we had four different wines, four or five different wines. I'm not sure if it's four or five. And one of the sommeliers was there to explain the different wines and how they go with each course. And the, the food was incredible. The presentation was second to none. It, 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 Princess has really leveled up their game when it comes to chef's table. Is it worth $150 per person? I, that's tough for us because it was a lot of food. I mean, more than we would normally eat. The, the, the uh, courses were nicely portioned. They weren't huge portions. And there's a lot of different things to try. And it was very, very well done. I can't imagine how they could do it much better given this ship and the way it is set up. If you're a foodie and you have shipboard credit or you don't mind spending $300 for two people for dinner with wine, um, I'd say it's worth it. It was the quality, uh, the presentation, uh, the, the service level, the professionalism, uh, everything was there. I mean, they did everything they could to make it a $150 per person value. So uh, we were very impressed. And I think it's certainly the best chef's table we've had on Princess. And I'd say in the top two of chef's tables we've had on any ship to date. So if you are a foodie, I would say that this ship, this chef's table is something you should maybe consider because it was that good. It was very well done. Okay, that's my update for now. It's day five, day at sea. Uh, I'll do another one of these if I can get it to upload. And uh, internet's still been a little slow for me. Not very fast. Especially the upload speeds. Download speeds are okay. Upload speeds are a little wonky. But it's been pretty reliable. Lots of uh, good entertainment. We're going to be going to another production show tonight. I think there's a Captain Circle thing tonight in the dome we're going to. And in a couple of days, two or three days, I'll give you another update. So thanks for joining me. And until I see you again, make sure you click the subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. Don't forget the notification bell. That's really important. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Put in the comments anything you want to know more about. We'll uh, check it out for you while we're on board. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, smooth sailing.